Okay, now everything is reattached and we're pumping down and we want to wait a, a good long while make sure the chamber pressure is down in the sixes preferably low sixes but we're at 4.5 to the negative six millibar so we're in a pretty good place to begin and since that isolation valve is open the chamber is pumping on that column the ion column so what we can do now is in the ion page up here go to the ion startup button and we can try to turn on the IGP this button here we'll go ahead and click that and we want to watch to make sure that it's actually starting to pump down and if there's too much atmosphere still in the in the column it won't pump down it'll start getting really hot and you'll need to stop and wait a few minutes and try again. But this is pretty promising. We're at 7.2, now 5.7 to the negative six. And it seems that the pressure is pumping down nicely. So we'll keep an eye on that for a minute, make sure everything's going down the way we want it to. And this is very similar to if you had a power outage or you vented the chamber for another reason and actually powered the whole tool down. This would be the same type of procedure that you would do to get the ion getter pump starting to pump down on the column. The one exception that's different is that isolation valve is open. So the ion getter pump is not just pumping on the column, it's pumping on the whole chamber. And once we're assured this is actually pumping down, we can go ahead and close that valve the same way we opened it in the beginning by going down, running eye control, selecting settings and going to GIS and now we will actually close the bypass valve. So now that valve is closed and the IGP is only pumping on the column itself which is its normal mode of operation. So this IGP has been pumping now for about 10 minutes and the pressure in the gun is dropped down to 2.9 to the negative 6 millibar so we're feeling pretty good that the IGP is doing a good job of pumping down the column. So we're gonna go ahead and sit okay there. And we'll come to the ion adjustments page. And down here, we wanna adjust the high voltage. So when we turn on the high voltage, or the high tension, we don't wanna ramp way up to 30 kV. We wanna start out small. And this is called conditioning the LMIS. So we'll hit zero. Oh, sorry, one. One is the lower limit that'll allow you to to enter in for the uh, the KV. The value of one KV has been entered. Yes to continue. So now when I turn on the high tension by pressing the button, the high voltage for the ion column will just ramp up to one KV. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Turn on the button on the rack. And we can click the high voltage button right here and the source is on and if we go over to the ion startup page we can unselect apply to keep the tool from continuing to try to start the source okay so now we have apply unselected so the computer stops trying to turn on the source as we're doing this conditioning and we'll go back to the ion adjustments page and type in 2 here for the high voltage and we're gonna ramp from 1 to 15 one kV at a time, giving about 30 seconds between each ramp, just to make sure everything is heating up and extracting fine. We're not putting any undue stress or arcing going on in the in the column. So we'll type in two and we'll hit enter, and you have to make sure you click yes every time or it won't ramp it up. So we'll say yes and turn on the high voltage. And you should be able to see down here in the status bar the kV move up to two and make sure that stays off sometimes it pops back on and this is the tedious part but it's important to go slow so you don't do any damage to the tool so we're gonna go up to three hit yes again and we'll keep doing this up until 15 kV and then when we get to 15 we'll go from 15 to 20 kV giving about a minute in between 20 to 25, about two minutes. 
25 to 30, about three minutes. And then we'll actually go beyond the 30 kV that it normally operates at, up to 33 or 34. And each increment then will give it about five minutes. So we'll actually go a little bit beyond its normal operating kV and then bring it back to 30 when we're finally done. So we'll skip a lot of that and we'll be back in a minute. So now we've had the high voltage sitting at 34 for a good 15 minutes and we're going to go ahead and bring that back down to 30 to its operating accelerating voltage. And we didn't hear any arcing or popping so we feel pretty good that we have everything aligned properly. And we'll go ahead and go back to the ion startup page and we're going to do a full heat cycle like you would to turn it on but it might take a few tries because this is a brand new source so we'll go ahead and bring the current all the way up to 3.2 and heat it for 45 seconds and hopefully if we're lucky the first time we'll see some emission but it's likely we'll have to take a few shots go ahead and say yes and we're now running through those contact leads that we saw before. We're running 3.2 amps through the LMIS, heating it up and making that gallium nice and liquid so it will flow and hopefully create a mission for us. All right, see the three pluses? It means we actually got a mission on the first track, which is a good sign. Okay, so it took a little bit of wrangling, but we got the emission current to 2.1. We had to lower the extractor from the preset 10 kV, and that'll slowly change as this LMIS ages in. One thing we can do here is go ahead and change in the presets tab. We can initialize to zero, so we'll know how many hours are on this new source. So we've got a brand new one. There we go. 